Hello everyone, welcome to Crypto TV. I'm your host Ornella Hernandez, here to talk all things Web3 and crypto. Today's show, we're going to look into a company that I've had my eyes on for a while called Imaginary Ones. We also have a special guest, so stay tuned. So lately, I've been doing deep dives or analyses of different crypto and Web3 projects that have come to my attention, whether because they are launching a token or because KOLs are talking about them or they just simply popped up on my radar and I wanted to investigate a little more. So today we will talk about imaginary ones. Perhaps you've heard about them already. They are big in Asia. I actually started playing one of their games on my iPhone called Bubble Rangers and now I'm addicted. It's like Temple Run and Subway Surfers. It's for those casual gamers out there. And these cute little bubble creatures are the characters of the original NFT project Imaginary Ones. After two years, since 2022, it has since evolved from a dynamic NFT collection into an entertainment universe or imaginary world, as the co-founders call it. And it's grown to offer merchandise, gaming and content in the Web3 space. So it's all about culture. And as my friend Rahim Matab always says, NFTs are basically tokenized culture. So this is something that Imaginary Ones seems to be doing well so far. The initial drop of 8,000 unique NFTs on the Ethereum network garnered over $10 million in just under four minutes back in April 2022. This was right at the start of the bear market, mind you. Now you can read about the lore on the Imaginary Ones website, but basically Imaginary Ones serve as the champions of hope in an otherwise dark world and their motto is live your most colorful life. I like it. <laughs> their second NFT collection is called Imaginary Rides NFTs. On the Ethereum network, it's basically vehicles for their bubbles and you can see the images here on OpenSea. Now after the success of these collections, it led them to release the Bubble Rangers game that I like. But what really put this company on the map was a significant partnership with a major fashion brand. Imaginary Ones collaborated with Hugo Boss. It created limited edition merchandise online and in-store, which resulted in record sales for the capsule collection of t-shirts. Let's look into this collab a little bit more. If we look at the Hugo Boss website, we can see that the collab focused on human emotions and mental health, they said. And they called it the Embrace Your Emotions Collection, which they're sharing the message that all feelings, whether positive or negative, are valid. And the feelings that they are particularly highlighting are joy, fear, sadness, love, and anger. This reminds me of the Pixar movie, Inside Out, where each of these feelings were embodied by characters in this kid's movie. So here we are combining NFT technology, digital fashion, and mental health in this collab. And people are buying it up, literally. <laughs> Hugo Boss decided to extend the collab with IO by showcasing the merch on avatars on a runway during the Metaverse Fashion Week in the Decentraland platform last year in 2023. Now I remind you that back in 2022, Hugo Boss had a rebrand and it split into two brands actually. Boss was for millennials and Hugo was for the Gen Z. So high profile TikTokers such as Cabby Lame and influencers and models like Kendall Jenner were among those that spent three days in the Dubai desert for the first big media activation of this millennial focused Boss rebrand. Personally, I thought this was a brilliant campaign. And then soon after, Hugo Boss followed with a collaboration with Imaginary Ones. So all this to say that perhaps Hugo Boss may have just seen IO and the metaverse as something to latch onto at first because it was trendy at the time. But it ended up really elevating not only Hugo Boss's relevance, but that of Imaginary Ones as well, especially in the Asian market. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the founders here. We have Clement Chia and David Lee, who both have strong backgrounds in animation and digital content creation, with Chia having collaborated with global brands like Blackpink, the musical group, Samsung, and L'Oreal. I watched a recent interview that he did with Animoca Brands for their Open Metaverse podcast, in which he describes the ethos of IO. He referred to the company as Web3 IP intellectual property, which in essence, most NFT projects already are. NFTs can refer to or contain valuable intellectual property rights. For example, artwork, branded goods, 
logos. It's up to the company behind an NFT project to grant holders rights to license this artwork. Like Yuga Labs, for example, Board Ape Yacht Club holders have commercialization rights to place their apes in films or books or any media of their choosing. But legally, Yuga Labs is letting owners borrow the copyright to that holder during the time that they own the NFT. I couldn't determine how Imaginary One's legal policy on IP rights is, so if any of you out there know, please let me know. Now, according to its co-founder, IO is targeting kids, the Gen Z population, and families. When asked about inspiration for IO on the podcast, Chia said that the Web3 space was and is too male-driven. So they wanted a story that would resonate with younger audiences, females, and families. He claimed that the I.O. mission is to tell stories, and the goal is to do it across generations. So this includes educating children on blockchain via their YouTube channel called Imaginary Junior. In its about, it says that Imaginary Junior is a subsidiary of Imaginary Ones, and it's a digital media company that creates and distributes content for kids. So these bubble characters all attend the I.O. school and the videos are more, mostly like nursery rhymes and they are shorts that are teaching children about how to tell if the eggs are fresh or how to grow vegetables. Some of their most popular videos garnered millions of views, but they haven't posted any new content lately and all the existing videos are from a year ago. As Chia put it, Imaginary Junior is a long-term IP play to expose the younger generation to crypto and Web3. So I guess we can expect more content soon. Okay, so overall, IO aims to entertain. And the businesses include gaming, content, merchandise, and partnerships. This reminds me of the Doodles NFT brand. And when one of the Doodles co-founders, Jordan Castro, also known as Poopy on X, said that Doodles is not an NFT project, but rather it is a company with the goal of becoming a leading media franchise that isn't held back by speculative market cycles. So soon after this, back in summer of 2022, Doodles named Pharrell as its chief brand officer. And he's still technically in this role. Thanks to Pharrell, holders have gotten Adidas Samba's NFTs, and they'll soon have access to a G-Shock watch collab. But I have not seen Pharrell talk much about Doodles in the almost two years that he has been part of the team, at least publicly. He doesn't even have the link to Doodles in his ex-bio. Granted, he does wear many hats, like being the men's creative director for Louis Vuitton, but still, I would like to see him elevate the Doodles brand more, especially given that it claims to be a Web3 entertainment company similar to imaginary ones. So when this Doodles film that I keep hearing about. Now, something else that Chia said in the Animoca Brands podcast is that imaginary ones puts the community first. The team wants to empower the IO community to build IP through games because the power comes from user-generated content. He wants IO holders to build their own games, essentially because, as he put it, games are a great way to scale IP with little to no knowledge of blockchain. And that leads me to another partnership that Imaginary Ones has with the Web3 gaming company Immutable X. So in addition to its Bubble Rangers game that I play, it has plans to expand its offerings in collaboration with Immutable and to develop a series of casual games focused on mobile first experiences on the Immutable ZK EVM. So I'm glad to hear that they have a mobile first approach because personally I play most of the games on my phone nowadays and if you're looking for another game by a major brand that attempted to do something similar and incorporate Web3 elements then download Louis the Game by Louis Vuitton. I play this one as well. Now beyond gaming, IO has plans for an all new native utility cryptocurrency token, which is supposed to launch very, very soon. And that's why I'm talking about it today. The token is called Bubblecoin because their characters are made of bubbles. And according to the Get Bubblecoin X page, it will launch in quarter one of 2024. So that's now. And in February, they announced via X that they successfully had raised capital in an oversubscribed round and named investors including Cypher Capital, Animoca Brands, Eden Holdings, MH Ventures, 
Illuminati Fund, Hercules VC, and Andromeda VC, just to name a few heavy hitters. They also named some individual angel investors, such as Sebastian Bourget from The Sandbox, and even Netflix Managing Director for Asia Pacific, as well as Gwendolyn Regina, who is the Investment Director at Binance. So IO states that this funding will allow them to scale their IP offerings and accelerate their efforts to be the leading Web3 entertainment group. So I want you guys out there to keep an eye out for when the bubble coin lists. And if you're interested, then maybe invest in an NFT in the meantime. This was a little overview of the Web3 company that is making moves and big claims and promises. So we'll see if it delivers. In the meantime, let me know what you guys think about Imaginary Ones. If you're holders, then let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. Also, let me know if there are any other projects that you want me to look into for you. Now, don't go away because we have a guest joining me on Crypto TV that you don't want to miss. Today's guest on Crypto TV is Stephen Bess, a dear friend of mine who is the marketing manager at the Future Blockchain Summit and Fintech Search. How are you today, Stephen? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Good. It's a pleasure to have you on. We've worked together in the past, especially for a Future Blockchain Summit. You guys have to check out those videos that I did last year, all the coverage, all the interviews. Make sure to check that out. And so today I wanted to just talk to you. A few months before this year's Future Blockchain Summit, I know it's... Uh, it goes fast. In advance. It goes really fast. Yeah, it yeah. goes fast. Um, but I wanted to just hear from you about how this year might be different than last year's. But first, what is, if you can explain to our viewers who don't know what it is, what is Future Blockchain <laughs> Summit? <laughs> okay. So the Future Blockchain Summit is hosted by the Dubai World Trade Center and is powered by Jitex. And I'm sure you're familiar with Jitex. It's the largest tech event in the world. Uh, I think we had upwards of 187,000 visitors last year, over 6,000 yeah. exhibitors. Uh, tech giants from all across the world come to Jitex. Um, I believe every nationality was in attendance at JITEX. And so Future Blockchain Summit was actually a government mandated initiative given to JITEX to basically mm. say, we need an event for blockchain. Blockchain is happening, blockchain is getting big. Let's make an event specifically for blockchain. And we're really the only event in the region that specifically focuses on all of the technologies surrounding blockchain. Right. Um, you'll see a lot of crypto events, you'll see a lot of crypto meetups, you see a lot of this uh, is sort of the trading aspect of things, but we're really the ones that focus on what about the technology behind blockchain? Blockchain is more than just, you know, buying a, a picture of an ape of course. and then selling it of for course. a lot more. The market's one thing, but the tech behind it is another exactly. thing. Exactly. And first and foremost, we are a tech show. Um, obviously, we still do have the, the crypto aspects of it. The consumers love, uh, they love to hear the crypto yes. gurus, our, our <laughs> crypto influencers. We do have quite large crypto influencers coming to the show. Um, even, you know, people such as David Shams, you know, who is mm -hmm. rumored to be the founder of blockchain, or yes, the founder of I crypto. I interviewed him as well on this show. Make sure Absolutely. to check out that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we do have, you know, quite influential people in the crypto space, but we also have people in um, the gaming space. We mm -hmm. have people in, you know, the actual, you know, the layer one, two, and zero technology space. We have the ones that are coming to the metaverse space, creating digital twins. So it is a really all-inclusive, uh, comprehensive show that can display all the technology behind blockchain, Web3, NFTs, crypto, and government governance of all those uh, emerging technologies as well. Yeah, of course. It's uh, one of the premier shows in Dubai. I know Jitex has expanded to a few other cities, but the amount of people that it attracts to the city is, is incredible. But I also wanted to just um, establish the structure because I know it might be a little confusing for folks out there. So Jitex hosts Future Blockchain Summit and Fintech Surge, which are just one of a couple of the expos or the shows within the the larger event itself but then there's also expand north star which is a startup and pitch competition right so there's multiple things going on at the same time so could you just explain exactly the relationship between all the parties for sure i mean with jitex being the largest tech show in the world it is now going on its 43rd year yeah. of existence so it is a long-running, long-standing, giant tech event. And 
tech is ever changing. So constantly they're incubating new shows within Jitex to make sure that it keeps up with the marketing trends. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you know, Future Blockchain Summit, as I mentioned, is going on its eighth year. Uh, Fintech Surge is another kind of up and coming new kind of household name is now going on its fourth year. And you know we, we incubate other shows within it, such as like AI Everything, uh, Marketing Mania, Dev Slam, which is about coding. Mm. Um, you know, so all of these sort of shows, and one of them was a startup and investor show um, that was Expand North Star. So all of us um, in 2022 were within Jitex at the Bay World Trade Center. So Jitex had. Um, Expand North Star, Fintech Search, and Future Blockchain Summit at the Bay World Trade Center. Then we realized that these shows were so big that yeah. they can actually have their own location within their own right. So we all moved out to Dubai Harbor under the umbrella of Expand North Star. So now at Dubai Harbor, we have Expand North Star, which generated about 58,000 attendees by itself alongside wow. of Jitex at Dubai World Trade yeah, Center. Yeah, you needed so much extra space to host all these people. Exactly. So about 2,000 exhibitors um, at Dubai Harbor uh, under Expand North Star, including Fintech Surge, Future Blockchain Summit. And now coming in 2024, mm -hmm. we have Jitex Impact, which okay. will also be at Dubai Harbor, which is the sustainability and ESG show. Oh, all right. Okay, so tell me what else we can expect that's different from last year for this year's edition of Future Blockchain Summit. So, so we really do what we can to keep up with the trends of what's happening every year, right? So, so whereas you know a couple of years ago NFTs might have been the big things, mm -hmm. now we're noticing actually a big emphasis on the technology of blockchain. So, what are the ap Good. actual applications of blockchain? So, to give you a little bit of a, a teaser, you know, we're still fleshing out you know how it's going to manifest itself, but we're working on you know finding the projects. So, um, mm -hmm. like kind of project scouting and talent scouting. So what are the actual big use cases that are being presented by using blockchain technology? What is possible now that wasn't possible last year because blockchain technology is coming into to fruition? So one of the other things is that we're, we're looking at um, how do we integrate uh, companies from Web2 technology mm. into Web3 technology. It's one of those things we, we don't want the market to see Web3 technology as an othering sort of technology, something that, that belongs to the Web3 people. Right. We want to say, how can I incorporate this thing that is clearly not going away, is clearly making a big difference in the ecosystem. How can I make our business more future thinking using Web3 and blockchain? Yeah, that's a really good point. People might not understand that, that Web3 is just the next evolution of mm -hmm. the tech that we already know and use. It's the next iteration of, of the internet and, and the tech tools that we use. And I also wanted to ask, given that Dubai hosts so many events in a given year, in a given week, you could go every day to something different. Why should someone attend Future Blockchain Summit, Fintech Search, and all the Jitech shows? Um, especially, not just if you're in the crypto, like you said, it's not just for, for blockchain community, but anyone. Why should anyone attend these shows compared to everything else going on in Dubai? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I think we touched on that a little bit. Uh, one of the main aspects is that we are a tech show first. We focus mm. on the technology first. Um, I find that a lot of the crypto meetups tend to just be crypto people talking to other crypto people and, you know, kind of preaching to the choir. A lot yeah. of the same people you're meeting at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, like an echo chamber. Very few creatives, very few people that are actually building something for themselves that's mm. unique to the next person that's building something for themselves. Whereas we are definitely a tech event first with all of the, um, all of the, all of the ecosystem kind of coming into play with that, right? Um, one of the big differences actually, especially even for the tech enthusiasts, is that we're the only, um, only event, especially in the region, that's actually supported by a virtual assets regulatory authority. Right. This is um, a government sponsored event. It at is the end a government, yes. um, semi government sponsored. Okay. But um, as you might know, you know, Dubai was the first to have a virtual assets regulatory authority. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so, so we do have them kind of on our side and mm. kind of, you know, teasing a little bit is that we're looking to incorporate them in a big way, um, especially this year. Um, just just what, are the, what are the regulations behind it? What can we do to make sure that the attendees that yeah. come to our event 
are not just talking to only scammers, talking to people that are trying to, you know, take, to make a quick bug, that are trying to, to flip an NFT, but actually talking to companies that have already been vetted and verified by a virtual assets regulatory authority, which is something that I don't know of other events, definitely not in the region, but I don't know if globally mm -hmm. you have, you know, 100% verified blockchain companies that have actually been confirmed that this is a legitimate company that we have no traces of them doing illicit activities. Yeah, and then what about your role in all this as a marketing manager? What's the most rewarding parts and the most challenging parts about your job? Yeah, sure. I mean, definitely one of the, the most challenging parts is sort of the questions that you were asking <laughs> initially. So there is a lot of competition. It seems like every time you look around, there's another show that we have to yeah. remind people, but we're not quite like them, but we're not quite like that. Um, Future Blockchain Summit specifically, I think, is a very easy show to, to say that we are very different in the fact that we, we have regulations um, that we're talking about because we're supported by a regulator. Mm. We are part of the single largest tech event in the world. So, you know, we do have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that come to Dubai specifically for these tech events. I mean, whenever you exhibit at our show, you know that you're getting quite a lot of uh, engagement, you're getting quite a lot of, yeah. um, you know, a lot, a lot of visitors and people will see your brand. It's just one of those things that you show up and people will find you. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, For sure. uh, another thing is that, uh, you know, we are one of the, the places where business is actually done. It's not just, like you said, an echo chamber. It's not just, you know, for people to, to hang out and have a fun party, but yeah. actual business is done. Um, being at Expand North Star, we have about a thousand investors that come in specifically looking for projects to invest in, uh, whether it's VCs, family offices, angel mm -hmm. investors. We very much look for opportunities for business to actually be done, and that's what we encourage at our shows. As a marketer, uh, I think one of the, the more difficult things is just, uh, I don't know, I, I didn't expect that question, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, well, go ahead. Mark, like making it, convincing people that it's gonna be different and bigger and better this year than it was mm -hmm. last year or in previous editions. Yeah. Right, I guess that's that's your main job. <laughs> yeah, uh, constantly evolving, you yeah. know, uh, pretty much as soon as you come off of the high of having a successful show. Yeah, and then yeah. you have to prep starting right away and almost next? for next year. What's next, you know? Yeah. Um, it, the market is always asking like, okay, if I've come to your show now three years in a row, what is coming on the fourth year? Why should I come the fourth year? I've already been there three times. Yeah. I've already saw this movie. What's, what's, <laughs> what's next in the sequel, right? Um, that is definitely challenging. Um, luckily, blockchain is, is an ecosystem that is ever evolving. It's not stagnant. So it is kind of a yes. little bit um, forgiving in that we don't have to invent new ways to, uh, to market it. Blockchain changes all the time. Yes, for sure. Well, I'm looking forward to this year's edition of Future Blockchain Summit and all the other shows under Jitex in October, correct? October 13th through 16th at Dubai Harbor. Okay. Guys, make sure to check out all the covers that I did from last year's Future Blockchain Summit, all the interviews. I'll put the links in the description below and check out all their coverage on Web3 TV. Now, before we leave, I have a little activity for us. It's a game of Would You Rather. Okay. So I have this like astronaut helmet mug. And inside there are questions of would you rather that we're going to ask each other. So I'll Sounds start exciting. and then we can like take turns. Sure. They're all blockchain related, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, this one's a topical one. <clears throat> would you rather have a Bitcoin wallet with a forgotten password or a wallet full of dog of Dogecoin? <laughs> dog coin. Dog with hat. <laughs> it could be the yeah. <laughs> um, I mean to me actually that's an easy one. Because if I have a, a wallet full of Bitcoin, but I can't access, what's the point of having it? That's right. like saying, would you rather Godiva chocolate or Hershey's chocolate, but you can never actually eat the Godiva. Um, yeah, I would definitely take the coin that I can access over the coin that I cannot access, for sure. Dogecoin, okay. Yeah. Do you own any Dogecoin? I do not. No, no. okay. No. I, I, I'm <laughs> pretty, I'm pretty uh, conservative with my, with my portfolio. It's okay. mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, just leave it, at, leave it there for now. Okay. <laughs> you can pick now. It's a long one. I know. They're, 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 <laughs> they're really they're rolled up. They're folded really well. <laughs> Okay. 
Would you rather live in a crypto themed metaverse or a real world city that only accepts cryptocurrency? I mean, the question is, would you rather live in as an avatar in the metaverse? I guess, I guess you never get to take <laughs> off your VR headset <laughs> if you choose that one. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'd rather live in a real world city. In a real world city, yeah. then, right? Because you don't always have to be in the metaverse. You get to, to tune out sometimes. Exactly. And get to live and experience exactly. the real world. What about you? The same? Uh, yeah, the same. Um, I'm personally um, not quite a fan of the metaverse oh, just okay. yet. Um, I think that uh, we'll probably see a lot more AR than VR, mm, personally. I think so. That's like a step one, mm -hmm. baby steps. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, um, yeah, I don't know if we should go there, but a lot of the metaverse that I've seen have not been that exciting. You know, people have like a metaverse office and it yeah. looks like an office. I'm like, it could be on Antarctica, it could be under the water, it could be in space, but you chose to actually design an <laughs> office. It literally has, like, you don't have to pay for the wood. You know that, right? Yeah, you can design whatever true. it is you want it to be. And there's a, no, no, we like our office the way it is. Just, you don't Virtual. have to come into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Especially the, gra it depends on the graphics, of course, if they're trying to be, like, photorealistic or if they're being more uh, creative and, and animated. But yeah, that's something that definitely needs to advance. Yeah, I'm just if if you're gonna do metaverse, do something you can't do <laughs> right. in the real world, world. Why would I want to go to a metaverse office that looks like the same office? Like, yeah, that's a good point. It's free. Make it whatever you want. <laughs> Make a mansion of an office. It's okay. Is that what you would do with your office? Uh, I'd probably do mine underwater. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Completely cool. underwater. All right. Invite me next time. Once you'll, that's you'll, you'll be there. You'll be the first. <laughs> All right, next question. Would you rather have a blockchain-based digital pet that requires feeding cryptocurrency or a real pet that eats regular food? <laughs> a regular pet is way cheaper. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, I would want to feed it cryptocurrency. You have to, you have to feed it money. Oh, Especially if the, the crypto market is doing great, then you, you, you literally feed it one Bitcoin. Next thing you know, you realize it tripled in value. Well, it's like those, like those programs. I don't know if you ever had like a... Um, the Gigabyte, Gigapet? There's a, yeah, there's a few. There was Gigapet, there's uh, the Tomagotchi ones. Yeah. Um, I used to play one called Webkins. So there's all sorts of like virtual pets that you had to like attend to and play yeah. with. You didn't have to pay for it. No, to grow. you didn't have to pay for it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, at least you know, most via currencies are, are stable enough to where I'm not going to worry about like, oh man, I'm flushing down triple <laughs> the value down my dog's throat every time. Okay, go for it. What would you choose, a real pet or a... I think I would go for a virtual pet. A virtual pet? Yeah. Not, not an animal yeah. lover? Unless, no, I do, but I like small dogs. So, and I need to be able to travel with it all the time. Ah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you rather be a crypto billionaire with no friends or a broke crypto enthusiast with a supportive community? <laughs> I would not ever choose to not have friends. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to go with broke but friends. But broke but with, with friends. Yeah. Kind of like what we are now. Well, <laughs> friends can help you not be broke anymore. Or being a billionaire <laughs> can help you make new friends. Well, that's true. But are they real friends? They're friends. They're yeah. around. Yeah, that's a trade-off. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I've been broke but with friends before, <laughs> and I would like to try the other way. Okay. <laughs> I, I would like to try the billionaire thing with no friends and, and see how it goes from there. Okay. Would you rather have a blockchain-powered smart toilet that pays you in crypto for using it, or a crypto mining rig that generates heat to keep your home warm? I'd probably use the, the first one. <laughs> the yeah, I wouldn't mind getting Same. paid to go to the bathroom. <laughs> sure. Same. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, that's so funny. Yeah, smart. We should. Someone should invent that. A smart. Yeah, does, does it pay you per uh, frequency or I per don't quality? Know. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, if anybody wants to create a blockchain-powered smart toilet that pays you crypto for using it, let me know. Yeah, I, I'd just be worried about if it per each use or I per the know. quality of use? Because otherwise that would change. Ew. Yeah, I mean, if I'm eating <laughs> junk food all the time, then I might use it more frequently, right. but it's terrible right. quality. Yeah, or it was like a crypto mining rig that power, that heats your home. 
I mean, that would be the, I mean, the, yeah. the sustainable. Like, we should That'd have said that one. <laughs> we should have said that. One. But we're worried about getting paid to use the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, would you rather receive your salary in Bitcoin or be paid in Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs? Interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm t I'm, I want to say Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would be cool to be paid in NFTs, honestly. As long as you like, don't need the money right away, you can always bank those NFTs for a rainy day. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, I mean, it just kind of depends, like, if it's a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT, and do I get a whole NFT each time I get paid? Yeah, we'd have to figure that out. Yeah. Also, do I get a, an entire Bitcoin each time I get paid? No, no. Bitcoin, it's a, like a portion, equivalent uh, yeah. of your, like, let's say In you get Bitcoin paid, shares. yeah, $5,000 yeah. equivalent Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I still think that I would prefer to get paid in Bitcoin. To me, it seems like the more stable yeah. option right now. Um, you know, because if you expect a certain salary, and then you get paid that salary, then you realize next month <laughs> right. it's half the value. Right. Then well, suddenly, I'm not excited about that salary that I got last month. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, it's like if you need, if you don't need all of that salary right away, and you're okay to just save some and let it play in the market then you're okay. Okay. Uh, would you prefer if your employer didn't pay you your salary, but said, don't worry, I'm investing in the market. <laughs> no. I'll pay it to you in a couple of years. No. No. <laughs> so no. in that case. No, but you have that option. You can save part of it, invest part of it, spend part of it. So I would rather get it in, in crypto. I've been paid in crypto before. Yeah. For jobs, for yeah, journalism I've, jobs. Yeah, so. sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, but you can also buy whatever NFTs you want with a Bitcoin. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so th there's that. I mean, I would definitely prefer to have the money in my hand so I can do what I want with it than yeah. to Same. just say, fingers crossed. Same. You know, let's, <laughs> let's, let's hope that it works well. Like, hey, I'm not going to pay you sal salary, only shares in the company. It's like, uh, l let me decide what shares I want to buy with my salary. Right, right. That's a more sensible option. All right, thank you, Steven, so much for your time today. I sure. learned lots about you and about your preferences <laughs> when it comes to crypto. <laughs> Great, thanks for having me. So where's the best place for someone to find out more information about Future Blockchain Summit and to reach out to you? Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, we do have our websites, futureblockchainsummit.com, fintechsearch.com. And, of course, follow us on the social media channels. We're on... Uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, you know, pretty much all of the channels at Future Blockchain Summit or Fintech Search. Awesome. All right. And guys, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the rest of Crypto TV. Bitcoin is currently trading at $66,518. Ether's price is at $3,348 today. Mantle is up today 11% today, trading at $1.37 today. And the price of ORDI is up as the market remains bullish on Bitcoin ordinals. That's all for today. Thank you for tuning in to my deep dive of Imaginary Ones. Make sure to give this video a like, check out other coverage on Web3 TV, and just let me know what you guys think in the comments below. See you guys later.